Hi there, it's Lee and Belinda. Hello, hi. From Chateau Marais. And um, so thanks to all of you who've enjoyed watching our little film so far. So we've had quite a few questions about our history. Um, and that's something we're very interested in um, as well. Not our history. Sorry, no, not the our history. history. Of the, the property. Sorry, the history of Chateau Our history, Marais, you don't, really don't want to know. Which is far more interesting than us. No. Um, so um, today we're going to give you a very potted history of what we know and what we've discovered so far. And then we're going to focus very specifically on one of our, which was a former building actually. The, the Sky Garden. Garden. The Sky Garden. Yeah, yeah. So it's a former building, we think. Um, um, do you know what I thought we could do? We focus on the Sky Garden and then in later videos go through the history of other buildings. And we'll show you the other ones. Loads of stuff around here to talk about. Lots and lots. So when we bought Chatham High, which was five years ago now, um, there was some written evidence, historical evidence here, actually. It was left here by, by the previous owners. And since then, I mean, we've spoken, haven't we, to... We've built upon it. Actually. ...local people yeah. who've told us a bit more about what they know. Um, so that's built our knowledge up. Um, but we wanted to find out more. So Lee, during this confinement period, has been doing some homeschooling. Um, now, you can appreciate it's, it's a while since Lee went to school, so um, Only a short while, that's, yeah, that's been a bit, bit of a challenge. Um, and you have to understand, when I went to school, I, I, I weren't at school. Weren't? <laughs> I wasn't at that's school. That's very clear, you yeah, weren't at school. I, I didn't do the English right. classes either. All joking aside, he's actually done quite a good job. I don't normally say nice things about Lee. <laughs> um, so he's done quite a good job, actually. I'm quite proud of what he's found out he's worked quite hard um and actually i'm going to defer to lee now uh i very rarely do um this must be a first actually but he does know more about the history than i do again rare um so lee i'm so honored off you go i get a chance to speak yeah. off you go with the history okay talk. right well um what i've tried to do is base everything we say on actual fact that can be proven um, uh, and where we don't have examples, which is the Sky Garden in particular, which is what we're going to be talking about later, um, there's a lot of mystery surrounding it. But all of the um, information I've gathered has been from desktop research, and also <clears throat> there's been two tomes that have been written in the area. This is one of them. That's very local, that one. It's a very local um, book. That's very specific to Montmorillon, which is our nearest town. It's yep. about 20 minutes away. And then there's <coughs> where we're listed in this book of chateaus. That's um, so, chateaus in Love and the Vienne, which is our Vienne, region. Which is our region. And also some work on the Knights Templar. So there was also a piece of work done called the Magna Carta Project by Professor Nicholas Vincent. Uh, which is published, um, and he researched the activities of the first, second, third, and fourth crusades uh, for the, the Knights, Knights Templar. Templar. Yeah, mm. and it records that King John, I think, on the fourth crusade, literally come through Montmorillon and passed by the I front door. That. Yeah, mm. so um, a lot of our thinking behind that has been brought about through his research and from looking at books. Do you think it might be useful actually just to anchor us where we are in France because they, yeah, they do mention on, on Escape to the Chateau DIY, they, they do mention sort of vaguely where we are. In fact, there's um, a little map on it and they drop a flag. They in, do. But I think um, you're right. But we are literally, we're on the corner, we're in the Vienne region. Um, Which is region 86 in French terms yeah. nowadays. <laughs> and um, we're on the corner of the Haute Vienne and the Andre. And the Andre is number 36 and the Haute, Haute Vienne is 87. Now, and the, this is interesting, the reason they're numbered is they're actually numbered alphabetically. And evidently French children have to learn by heart the names of the yeah, regions and the yeah, numbers yeah, of the regions. Yeah. That's a so useless. It's like learning car number right. plates when we were kids. <laughs> are you gonna steal those cars? So we are going to be walking outside a bit later on. The reason we're filming this introduction indoors is it's a bit blustery and blowy today. Um, and we didn't want to disturb the film, the sound of the film quality too much. So we're starting off inside. What I thought would be a really good idea is mm. a lot of people have asked us, um, they've seen the drone footage on Escape to the oh. Chateau DIY flying over the house, but no one's really got a... A, a real orientation or a feel for where all the so buildings are. So it's having that link, isn't it, yeah. in your head of where the various buildings so are on site. what I thought I'd do is if I sketch out 
a, a, a plan, a site plan of where all the buildings are. Okay. And today we'll focus on the Sky Gardens. Does that mean I'll be allowed to film? Yes, you can. You can. <gasps> you can. You can use the the filming finger. Ooh, thank <laughs> Thanks for that. Is that what we're going to do next? Yeah, let's let's draw okay. out the site plan. All right then. Okay, so to start with, the chateau is around about here. Mm -hmm. Very good drawing. Very straight lines. And it's a it's a T shaped plan with a turret that sits around about there. Okay, mm -hmm. added to that, there was a chapel. That is now a bar and games room. Yep. With a, the room upstairs actually is a new project, which we are yet to reveal. Then there's the Sky Garden, which That's is That's where we're going to go today. That pentagon shape that Lee's drawing there. And there's steps down to a pathway that leads down to the river that way. So the river's very, very The far river down, is here. Isn't it, Lee? Very, very steep um, descent and ascent. Yeah, there's the river. Yeah. There's a wall that comes up from the Sky Garden here. Yeah. And a little bit of a wall there. There's the donjon that is Everyone here. Everyone knows the donjon. <laughs> That's the one with the holes in the roof. Yeah, and the donjon used to go down here, and we have Napoleonic plans to show where the donjon was. But that's been demolished, that part, and it's now a barn that's on this and side we're going there. To, we're going to devote, actually, one of these films to the donjon because it's such, it's such an interesting building. And then there's the cottage, which is here, that's which home. is where we live. There's the pig barn, which is the studio which is there. There's goat barns here. The swimming pool is here. By the way, um, that is not an ancient construction, that pool, you might be wondering. No. It's almost brand new. This is the gates into the property. Mm. Um, and the medieval gravestones are here, just outside. So we're going to pop down to the Sky Garden in just a moment and show you what's down there. Um, but before we do that, I think it might be quite useful, Lee. I think our viewers might be interested to know um, a bit about the date. So just to, so approximately. So we know the sort of date of the donjon, don't we? But um, you've got a cat's hair on you there. Um, but do you think the Sky Garden is older? Yeah, I think we know from the local historic society have been here and, and they know the area really well. Um, and they have said that the donjon dates from about 1350. Mm. Um, the Sky Garden, where we're going to take you in a minute, it was the first construction on the site, so it's safe to assume it was before 1350. The fact that the foundations are solid would mm. suggest that there was a tall tower built there, mm. which is what they were building around about those times. And the fact that it's in a pentagon shape tends to suggest it might be from the Knights Templar movement mm. because the earlier Roman uh, towers were built on a square footprint and the later French towers were built on a circular mm. footprint and this is on a uh, pentag uh, pentagon. Um, and the pentagonal? Pen pentagon, no, yeah. <laughs> Pentagonal. Diagonal. That's not even pentagonal. a word. Anyway. Anyway. Just made that one up. Well, pentagonal. Let's, let's use <laughs> Belinda's terminology for anyway. ancient history. Anyway, uh, the, the Pentagon was uh, used as a symbol of safety by and, and security and, and um, re, uh, linking the, the Knights Templar to the um, movement, the religious movement from the uh, Christ's um, crucifixion, which is where the five points mm -hmm. come from. Taking a look outside, I think the weather's cheered up a little bit now. And so, so have I. <laughs> anyway. Let's um, have a look. Oh, it must be that time of day. <laughs> um, so, should we head off and take a look at the Sky Garden? Yeah, come on. Come let's and go. join us. Let's go. Come on. So, this is coming in through our entrance gates. Chateau in the background. Our cottage to the left with the pig barn on it. Don John. Goat barns. All the way, all the way around, down here. As you can see, what this has done is it 
it forms a really nice sort of almost medieval courtyard um, and what Belinda could you show people where the well is because we have our own well interestingly enough the well is in the center of the courtyard because source of water was very um, highly protected in in these sort of older castles because if they were ever under a siege or anything the water supply was essential now we've got a big slab of marble over it but as you can see we've got the pipes coming out because we've got a pump down there and in the summer when that starts giving water we use the water from that to water the garden but unfortunately the water recovery time in the well isn't so good so Belinda you're going to take us down to the sky garden I am. Right. This is the story of my life. I'm following you everywhere, Belinda. And just, just want to stop and show the view from here because it's wonderful. Right the way across the countryside. So I just want you to take a look at the shape of this, uh, what we call our sky garden, which clearly uh, was not originally made as a garden, but it's got a very interesting shape, hasn't it, Lee? Yeah, I, I, what, what's interesting about the shape of this is I'm gonna include some still shots of this, but it's uh, a pentagon shape. Now, the um, Romanesque towers were square in plan, and the later French ones were a circular tower. But the Pentagon one is quite unusual, and I think that links to the Pentagon that was the symbol used by the Knights mm. Templar. And as the references to this are in a lot of the Knights Templar um, chapels. So we've decided to have a, a bit of a rethink about this uh, and make it, make it more of a feature. What we want to do is to do some more planting on here. And actually, but you can see the planting that we, we put in last year is already bearing flowers over there, fruit and flowers. Look at that beautiful white iris, that's fabulous. Uh, you can see I'm already starting to deconstruct the rocks and move them out of the way. It needs to be much better done than I, it just looked like a pile of rocks, yeah, I really wasn't happy with it. It's not, we did it in, in a rush to be fair. And and we want to redo what that. we've got is a mad tree climbing cat Look that's just that. run it's up like a, the tree. It's like a cat squirrel. Cat squirrel, mm. <laughs> and what you can see from here actually is a really good view of the chateau from the from behind. So what you're looking here, this is the the lower bedroom quarter that you saw. Um, that's the upstairs bathroom, one of the upstairs bathrooms there. Here is our bread oven. This is the back of the chapel, and just behind here is a terrace. I'll see if I can show you the terrace. Yeah, you can just about see it. About there's the terrace. Um, what's really important from a historic point of view is we're only about 50 metres away from the chateau at this point. You can see how steep the incline is. Now, back in uh, really medieval days, this steepness of slope would have been used as a defence mechanism. So it's almost harking back to the days of Mott and Bailey castles where you had the bailey, which would have been the upper part of the castle, and the mott, which would have been the big dip that runs like a moat-like all the way around it. These really ancient steps here, because again, we think these are quite important in terms of potentially dating this. And I know, Lee, you're doing some more work on dating this. You've been looking at, haven't you, at the brick the various types of brick construction. Yeah. Um, but we need to do some, some See, more on that. But um, these, these look pretty ancient to me. The thing, that, the thing that puzzles me about this, first of all, the walls for this are really, really thick. If this predates the donjon, that, i.e. is before 1350, which it could very well be, the expense, both in terms of finance and, and manpower, to actually put all these steps in to something that's leading nowhere wouldn't have made sense. The other thing is you can see from here the river runs and bends all the way around this. And these trees that you can see here, they were planted in the 60s. And I've got photographic evidence from a postcard of the 60s where this was completely clear. So if this was some form of donjon going up 30 or 40 metres, it would have had unparalleled aspect views of the region. And the reason that would have been important, this is right on the border of 86 and 87 region. And back in those days, 
there would have been lots of problems with people marauding and trying to land grab from the various regions for themselves. So I'm going to be really brave and take a walk down these steps and, and try and make it down to the river, which I have to say I've not done many times. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is some, some of our local um, fauna. He's been a bit shy. There's a massive... Like a Roman snail. Massive snail. Right, I'm going to be really brave and walk down. Once again, we're back to this issue of these steps. It would have been a great effort to put these stone steps in leading down to the river if this had no use other than a sky garden or a garden. And I don't, don't believe for one minute it was. And one of the things I would like to point out is the different colour stones. So uh, I've done a bit of research on this and you can see here from a close-up that you've got the light grey stones at the top and the much more medieval stones which are darker around the bottom and I think it was all at one point this darker stone going way up in the sky and when they um, repurposed a lot of the construction of this this lighter grey stone was left as the capping to finish it off and create what was a, a garden there you can see the steepness of this I'm going down this track here but you can see a cross section from here how steep that rock is from from the sky garden right away down to the river and that would have been a natural defense in its own right so uh, as you can see lee's cleared the footpath down here it's a it's a once a year job so to be honest we don't get down here very often in fact this is the second time i've been down here in five years so you're lucky. Um, I'm avoiding crunching snails as I walk along. Well, you've got <laughs> size 10 hoofs like My that, clogs. Belinda. You're gonna, they're not going to survive very long, are they? As usual, as well, we've got the kittens that are coming. We've, oh, there's one just dived up there. Mm -hmm. And the other one's just gone up a tree. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. And this is the river walk down oh, here. This is fabulous down here. Look at this. So, and you can see the proximity to the river from here. Obviously all these stinging nettles need to be cut back, which is a, another job for possibly another year. <laughs> yeah, I know, I've cleared it all. But yeah, it's so So this was a discovery we made when we first bought the place. And you can see there's this really old pair of gates. Right but this is this is the second time that I've been down here and yeah. I've seen these. Yeah. Oops. So these old gates are just literally stuck there. Um, in, in in the middle of nowhere virtually. You can see if I pan on the camera around, it's just literally woodlands and a river. However, someone felt it necessary to put gates there to stop people coming up. It's a low wall with the cat's walking on there and that goes all the way around the estate here. And what's also interesting, Belinda, would you like to tell the story of the, the myth of the golden cockerel? Oh yes. Um, so, Which you uh, can see up here on the top of the <laughs> pillar. It wasn't long after we'd bought the chateau when we got to know some local uh, people from the village here. Sorry, can we, you just, the... I've always wanted to see what you look like behind bars. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we began to hear, we began to hear tales of the golden cockerel, the myth of the golden cockerel, which we hope isn't a myth, because evidently somewhere on site here at, at Chateau Mahai is buried a cockerel of pure gold. But many people have looked for it and no one has ever found it. Now Lee's brought his metal detector with him um, from England. Um, and I think that's going to be a project in the very near future. One day, Belinda, we'll all be millionaires. So here's another view of the river. You can see it winds its way and it's really curvy. And then this is the bit I don't understand. There's the two cats. This is the, the golden cockerel on the gatepost. And then they've, whoever did it went to the expense of building a huge wall right the way along to the base of that um, rock. rock which forms the foundation stones for the sky garden so that was a tremendous amount of effort to bring all those stones from wherever they came from and all the way down here at this steep incline to build a wall I, and we don't understand why that is unless it was a defense 
Do you think there would have been a, another cockerel up there? Yeah, I think it's a bit odd just to have just, one cockerel on the top of one of the two posts. Particularly as they've finished this, if you look at this post, it's finished right the way into the yeah, rock into there. The so it's, they've done a good job of it and that would have taken loads of time was, and effort. I wonder when that was built though, seriously, what sort of year would that have been built? But what built? purpose did it serve? I, know, I mean, I all right, there's out. gates, but then it mm. wouldn't take much to hop over that low level wall if you wanted to get in, there's no problem. Lee? Yeah. That was a great tour down there, but can you tell everyone a bit more about what you think that building, what it, what it actually was? Because yeah. all, all we can see is a, a pentagon, which yeah. we've made into a garden. What do you think right. it was? Right, well, I, I've, at the moment, this is purely my theory, um, but I'm looking to find some evidential proof of what it was. But I think the fact that the Sky Garden is in the shape of a pentagon, rules out a Roman and rules out... Uh, uh, early French towers. Uh, the Pentagon sign was a sign used by the Templars mm. relating directly to the crucifixion and they believed uh, that it was a sign of safety and protection and I think that watchtower was a protective watchtower. I've got a feeling it was built by the Templars mm. and uh, demolished after the Templar Inquisition uh, because most of it, the Templar Inquisition was when they were put to death in France and now I think that might have been the reason why it, it was um, dismounted and taken down and repurposed so into So do you think donjon. it was a, built, a, a tower? I think it was a tower, what, what I think it was lived? there for defensive purposes, right. this was on one of the Crusader routes and that tower is just slightly off of the main route and it may have been used for storage of treasures being taken oh, from right. Jerusalem back to England or it might have been used as a store for Knights Templar or for knights fighting the French at the time. Uh, it could have been any of those things and I think it would have been quite tall because the foundations are very substantial and the fortification of it with the, the steep inclines down to the river and one way in and one way out, that would have earmarked as a really strong defensive um, fortress and that's what I think it was. We hope you've enjoyed this um, yeah. really very potted history, if you like. Um, so we're learning, Lee's learning, I'm learning as we go along. We're doing lots more research. Um, so we just wanted to bring you this little insight that we've got, if you like, into what's the history of Mahai. Um, and just to show you one of several um, locations here on site that we think are very interesting. Um, there's more to come. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it and once again thank you for supporting us. Yeah, I, th I think just to add to that, I think the, the history of this particular building is unique and it sets us apart from, from a lot of other buildings in the area. So, and each building's got its own story. It's to certainly tell. well known and very well loved locally. Yeah, we it's love well, it. a well loved place <laughs> and we love it and I hope you do too. Bye for now. Bye bye.